I'm Linda Elsiegood, founder of the LDN Research Trust. It has been my honour to interview LDN researchers, prescribers, pharmacists and patients from around the world for many conditions. Thank you for joining us. This evening I'm joined by Shannon Garrett, who's a thyroid and autoimmune women's wellness nurse. Thank you for joining us, Shannon. Thank you, Linda. It's so great to be with you this evening. I'm, I'm really happy to be talking to you. It's been a long time. <laughs> well, I've known you for many years, and I must say I don't think I know of a bigger advocate of LDN than yourself. Could you tell us when you first heard about LDN? Oh, gosh. It's been several years. I don't really remember the exact year, unfortunately, but it was... When I originally heard of LDN, I had been on a really... I guess a decade searching for help and for diagnosis. And when I finally received the diagnosis of Hashimoto's, I was also diagnosed with celiac disease and pernicious anemia. But that wasn't really the beginning of the healing journey because doctors truly didn't know what to do for me besides prescribe, you know, thyroid replacement hormone. It was when I was in the presence with another nurse who told me, about LDN and how it helped her father who had multiple sclerosis. And so I just, you know, as I would talk to her and I was like, tell me more about this LDN and where do you get it and all this. And as she explained to me how it worked, it really made, it just really made sense to me. Um, And I thought, why can't it work for me? So I started searching I searched on Facebook just for information about it, and I found several support groups that were really, really helpful and inspirational. But I knew to have the conversation with my doctor that I needed to find what research I could on it. You know, it was fairly limited at the time, but what I found I thought was enough for he and I to have a conversation. So I gathered all the information I could that I thought was credible. Um, I presented it to him during an appointment, and he was like, you know, (laughs) he knew how I was. He knew I was research-oriented, and I told him I had this new information to um, share with him, and he, we met in his office. He put his feet on his desk, and he's like, just laid on me. What is it? (laughs) And, and, you know, we both agreed that, up to that point, I was really not getting better. Despite following, you know, all of the standard um, integrative and functional medicine intervention that we use today, that many people are able to sometimes get into remission, you know, early on by following, I had, you know, my case of Hashimoto's was resistant. So uh, we agreed that LDN was was worth trying. Um, Prior to that point of actually, you know, having the prescription filled and actually starting LDN, I knew that I had to get my body ready for LDN based on what I'd learned about candida, nutrient deficiencies, food sensitivities, and whatnot. So I really worked a solid nine months on getting my body ready because I was committed. I really wanted this to work. And um, that's how it started. And I haven't, I've been on LDN for several years now. I've been able to find remission. The only time I've been off of it um, was last year for a major surgery that I had had. But uh, I I got right back on it and I'm still on it today. I hope to be on it um, the rest of my life, actually. Mm Mm-hmm. And what have you done about helping other people with the knowledge that you've learned? Oh, well, when my doctors saw what I was able to do with my health and completely turn it around, I mean, it's as if I became really a new woman who is vibrant and, you know, really enjoying life again. The funny thing that happened is they started sending their wives to me. (laughs) <laughs> you know, can you help my wife? You know, and and I would work with them, and we would see progress being made. Then they started sending their patients to me because, honestly, 
even though they were willing to prescribe LDN, they just didn't really understand all the, you know, nuances and how it applies to, to a Hashimoto's patient. Uh, they knew that with, for example, a patient with MS or lupus, we could start at a certain dose and, you know, everything was pretty cool from that point. But there are a lot of variables with Hashimoto's patients and starting LDN that, that really aren't, you know, doctors aren't necessarily aware of. So um, as I worked with their wives and then following working with their patients, I realized that, you know, I think I'm onto something here that I could offer uh, a service to really help the doctor and help the patient start LDN at the right time in their journey, teach the patient how to get their body ready for LDN, teach the patient, you know, through education on how to self-monitor when they're starting LDN, when the correct follow-up testing um, should occur, uh, help the patient choose the right pharmacy for their LDN, the right fillers. Uh, I've seen some patients who just can't tolerate capsule form, so we'll opt for the cream. You know, our doctors just may not be aware of all these uh, variables, and what happens is I can communicate with the doctor and let them know when a patient is ready, when they're ready to raise their dose, um, and they really do appreciate that. I haven't found a physician yet who's just not relieved <laughs> to have someone who's clinically trained to be able to work with their patients. Um, and, you know, the goal we all want is for the patient to succeed with LDN, not be put on it. What I'm seeing with some doctors who necessarily will agree to prescribe it because they're hearing about it, fortunately, you know, we have a greater awareness now for LDN in the medical community. and that we, we have the conference, and that's fabulous. Um, but they don't always, as I said earlier, understand these minute um, factors that are really important. And what, I'm, what I have seen is, here's an example. Um, perhaps a patient was diagnosed with Hashimoto's based on the presence of antibodies, but yet they're so new in their journey, it's still so early that they may not really be experiencing symptoms yet. So that particular patient is not going to be <laughs> motivated to go on LDN, and number two, they may not even be ready because uh, they haven't been tested for candida, candida is often an underlying issue in any autoimmune condition. And so if that patient's immediately put on LDN, it's just a huge mistake because, it's, number one, it's probably not going to work. And number two, when it doesn't work, then the doctor thinks this stuff just doesn't work the way I heard that it did. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, that can be really unfortunate. So we want to, you know, really empower the patient and the doctor to understand that LDN doesn't always work, but we want to give it the greatest opportunity to work by initiating it correctly and uh, following a, a protocol and closely monitoring the patient, especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you say the success rate of the people that you have been helping with has been? If it's a compliant patient and they follow what I'm asking them to do in terms of getting their body ready for LDN, um, working with the pharmacy that's you know qualified to compound LDN, um, I would say 90 to 95% mm -hmm. success rate, definitely. And how I can tell you certain that in addition to um, Hashimoto's patients, I've had several patients I've worked with who uh, don't necessarily have Hashis, but they have a condition I had very, very early on in my adventures <laughs> with uh, a condition that relapsed and remitted over time, and that's interstitial cystitis. And I have had several patients who have had success with 
LDN and the uh, termination or reduction of their interstitial cystitis pain. Um, I've had several convers conversations with a research doctor at Vanderbilt, Dr. Charles Stratton, who is, um, you know, he has a lot of theories about interstitial cystitis, but one thing that has come out is that they do believe it's closely linked with autoimmune conditions. They just don't necessarily know how. But what we have found anecdotally is that um, LDN is a uh, very positive and effective intervention for that type of thing. And uh, I have I have at least five patients that I've worked with recently who have really been down a horrible path with interstitial cystitis years long and not able to find relief. And um, we've, we've seen quite a bit of success. I'm not saying we didn't have momentary setbacks, but we have seen major improvements in their quality of life after being on LGN. Mm -hmm. And how many people would you say that have passed through your hands, as it were? Oh, my goodness. How many people? Mm -hmm. Since I've been working as an LDN nurse educator, uh, that's in addition to autoimmune and thyroid um, nursing care, mm -hmm. I would say a couple of hundred or more goodness. or just over. I mean, I'm just guessing. It's a lot. Yes. You know, okay. for just... For just little old me, <laughs> but um, I have been able to. Um, after establishing my business name is Shannon Garrett Wellness, and then in the past year, uh, we have registered the name in addition to that Shan um, Holistic Thyroid Care, and through that, I've I've hired team nurses to help me. Um, reach out to other physicians who can sort of work as holistic thyroid care team members, and they will work with us on, um, you know, if I'm working with patients remotely, which is normally the case, I don't have a clinic where people come in to see me. Uh, it's all done remote, but I have physicians in place who will, on a long distance basis, when I can assure them a patient's ready for LDN in my judgment, um, I can share their records, set up a, a telephone consult for them, and then they can have their appointment with that physician by phone to, um, to you know, pursue the prescription. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then following that point, I will monitor them while they're starting LDN, you know, show the patient how to self-assess and share with me their self-assessment journals every week and just monitor and make sure things are going well for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have any of the um, patients reported back any negative side effects to you? Yeah, not negative side effects, but it's, it's uh, you know, the, the sleep issue is always, you know, even though it's explained on the front end that the first two to three weeks you may experience what you perceived to be insomnia um, and that that typically stabilizes you know that's um, feedback that's t the typical feedback I can expect and that mm -hmm. usually does happen there have been a handful of patients who uh, have a concern that their anxiety has increased after being on LDN in the beginning uh, when we look into that, it's typically related to something else and not really the LDN necessarily, mm -hmm. uh, but that has happened. And when that does happen, um, I have suggested to the doctor that we change the patient out to the topical cream instead of the capsules, and usually that has helped. Mm -hmm. What else would you like to add, Shannon? Only that, you know... L I, I'm just so grateful that LDN is now receiving the recognition it deserves. I mentioned on a summit that I was on earlier this year that for the healing potential that LDN offers, you know, I can't believe that we're not standing from the mountaintop screaming its praises the way that uh, mer uh, medical marijuana receives attention. 
Mm. <laughs> um, it, it's just really fascinating to me that, that it's not. Um, it's a safe medication. Uh, I, I, I just, I want to see, how do I put this, the awareness grow for its use in Hashimoto's and how to correct, correctly prescribe it, when to prescribe it in a patient's journey, and understand that, you know, LDN is a commitment. You know, it may be lifelong in many of these patients who've had, you know, the autoimmune process going on underneath it all for, for a long time. Um I'm also fascinated by it. Um, I think there was some research that came out that it reduces inflammation in the central nervous system, and so that can help with various pain syndromes. Certainly seen that anecdotally in many patients. I have um, a couple of physician friends who just had random hip and back pain, um, no structural problem, nothing that they can you know, really understand why. They just think they're getting older in their back. Mm-hmm. And their bones are starting to hurt, but they tried LDN on themselves, and it helped with their pain. So, um, you know, for that, I think it could really help a lot of people. It's just that the tr- conventional medical system, um, research hospitals, and so forth, are not really receptive to it because of the research scientific research issue, but um, I think that could change, or I hope it could. Mm-hmm. So would you like to just repeat again how people can contact you, Shannon, your web address? Sure. Um, yes, so they can find me either through holisticthyroidcare.net or shannongarrettwellness.com. Well, thank you very um, much. On Facebook. I'm, sorry. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm on Facebook, um, Holistic Thyroid Care. And I just wrote a book on um, the Hashi Sisters Guide to Low Dose Naltrexone that's available on my website. And it's really intended for the patient and the practitioner. My, my goal with that book was that patients who are interested in LDN would share that information with their practitioner. Just trying to plant as many seeds as I can about LDN. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Linda. Do you have LDN experience to share? If so, please email me, linda at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you.